Hello, my dear brothers and sisters. Praise the Lord and a warm welcome to one and all of you. And I greet you in the matchless name of our dear Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As always, I feel very, very privileged to be part of these sessions. And uh, I really want to thank my master, Jesus, who enabled such wonderful time of fellowship that we could have with one another. I'm a firm believer that you are not free of temptations. You are not free of troubles. You are not free of problems. You are not free of issues. Maybe some of these you have or some people, some brothers, sisters listening to me, all of these you might have. <laughs> but the good news I have is you and I have been given the powers to overcome these problems. You and I have been given the powers to crush the head of the Satan right under our feet. Romans 16, 20 says that. Yeah. And God is able to save us. He will enable his grace. He will give us the strength to bear and also to overcome, make a way for you to escape. And he will not allow anything beyond what you could bear, which also means beyond what you could overcome. Right? He always allows things in certain portions, certain limits, certain, certain threshold, which will never lead you towards the side of failure. Yeah? You are Victor's son. The name of the victor is Jesus, who overcame death, who reigned over death. The tomb could not deny his resurrection and there is blessed assurance in his resurrection. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 to 11, you can read later, right? Blessed assurance in the resurrection power of Jesus and his grace is there to give us the strength during the times of weaknesses. All of us know this famous verse, right? 2 Corinthians 12, 9. Correct? My grace is sufficient for you. In the times of your weaknesses, my strength is your portion. And those that shall believe in this God, remember his afflictions, all these afflictions that he is permitting is only for a mere moment. It's a, they are temporary. Bible uses this word, 2 Corinthians 4, 17, 18. But your joy and victory is forever. Like how Job went through the traumatic time for roughly around 10 months, 9 to 10 months, I think. These are the, this is what scribes are saying. But then he has been remembered. For ages, centuries, for many thousands of years, he's still that wonderful role model, an example who demonstrate that, what to say, that richness in faith. He's still an exemplary role model to you and me. But then he had to go through that short interval, 9 to 10 months. 9 to 10 months is really not a short time, huh? But then if Job had to really attain that state, being that wonderful role model, no one could beat his record, then obviously that time is very short. Yeah, For the kind of uh, credibility and reputation that he had earned in the eyes of God, in the eyes of mankind, in the sight of mankind. So sometimes it may sound too long, but really understand this fact. Hey, if certain problems are really lasting for too long, hey, your credibility is much, much bigger. Yeah. The outcome is much, much bigger. Your reputation is going to be much, much bigger. Your victories in that battle will be much, much bigger. And God is really building you in certain areas where you will gain more richness in credibility in your reputation. Therefore, do not be worried. Matthew chapter 6, you all have to read. Do not worry about tomorrow. Enough is the trouble for today. Do not overthink. How long this will go? God knew it. God would have stipulated an expiry date for every problem, every issue, every sickness, every weakness, every trouble, every tribulation, every trial. There is an expiry date tag. <laughs> Only thing you and I cannot see that expiry date tag clearly. These days there is a bar barcode system, isn't it? Barcode system. You go to supermarket, you purchase some 10 products or something like that. The guy doesn't look into the, that is old, uh, olden days, right? They have that uh, old computer or forget computer. Even before that, five, five decades ago, you go to any supermarket. There was no supermarket concept, you know, here and there some sh grocery shops will be there. By the time he bills, no, the time you took to purchase, the billing time will be double the portion. There will be a long queue for billing. Then somebody invented a computer. It's all preloaded and all that. And they have to still manually enter and all that. And that that, that 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 queue became half. Now it's barcode system. 
where they have to just scan the barcode and immediately the computer detects the product and all that they need to do is you know they enter the quantity and that's it enough the queue became just one tenth now correct or sometimes you don't even queue why because there is a self billing system if you fool the system the, the system can clearly detect while you get out of the shop it, there is a scanner and it will clearly detect you know there are a lot of unbilled products with you and the security will come and catch you now there is no queue at all yeah, i went to us and i found the system a very attractive system easily you can bill on your own but you cannot cheat the cheat the system they have some security mechanism to detect if you are really cheating or if you are honest they appreciate you and let you go out of the supermarket yeah now i don't know why i gave this example all the time saying is expiry date expiry date tag is there and the tag is a barcode and the barcode can be scanned only through a machine which is available with god <laughs> therefore don't make your efforts to find out ah when this will end when this expiry date will let expiry date will pass through no you you cannot don't make any efforts why because that machine is with god the scanning machine is with god but trust in him he is faithful he will not allow anything beyond what you could bear which means he would have stipulated an expiry date for every single problem that you might go through in your life my dear beloved sister my dear brother this is what builds faith in you right we are uh, the beauty of our ministry is we teach things in a very very practical way in a very simplest simplistic manner uh, we we teach things therefore you understand it's a practical teaching correct there is an expiry date tag for every problem every trial every temptation every tribulation every harassment every single thing that you are going through in your life and the expiry date is for sure marked within the boundaries within your threshold within your limitations within your capacity and god is faithful to make that problem expire to make that problem vanish to make that sickness vanish and he is faithful he is faithful just believe in that all right a warm welcome to this episode number 2 where we are studying through this subject on christ returns to earth and in our first episode we have conducted a detailed study uh, which had been entitled as eschatology eschatology comprises of seven events starting from the second coming of jesus all the way to the intermediate state right yeah and in, in the 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 lo- a lot of things that happens between the first and seventh event such as you know the rapture the judgment day and uh, new heaven and earth and eternal misery and punishment in the lake of fire and um, yeah spiritual immortality so many things we discussed now we are talking through the subject on christ returns to earth we are going to take you through 14 important events which has been extracted from the bible in comparison to what is already happening in this world which proves that the end times have already started it's been already kicked off the end of the age is not something that is yet to come but we are already in the end times the end of the age by saying that we have never spoken like a cult speaker yeah sell everything that you have and uh, give it to the poor and all that correct and jesus told the same thing to that rich young ruler sell it to Sell, sell your, sell all that you have and give it to the poor. It does not mean that he has to beg on the street. Now keep something that is needed for yourself, for your own family. Who will feed you if you were to give to everyone and then beg on the streets? No, that is not something that Jesus spoke. It's an absolute, uh, you know, it will be a stupid thing for Jesus to mention, yeah. And that's why even Anna and Safira, if you look at them, look at them very carefully, they hid something. and they spoke a lie they had a lying tongue being insisted by the demons the unclean spirits that dwelt in them but rather they could have come to peter and told honestly hey i we need something for our own family needs and peter would have said yes of course take it for yourself and give whatever the lord persuaded in your heart god loves a cheerful giver but not emphatically a god is wanting us to do anything but 
abide in the laws and commandments of god in literal tense okay so truly these are the last days where you will see a lot of deceptions happening you will see a lot of cult speakers cult churches evolving you will see a lot of false prophets more than uh, i mean more in numbers than ever before all these things are being prophesied in the bible by jesus <clears throat> and also by his apostles right as inspired by the holy spirit matthew 24 we have we have reviewed multiple verses already and these 14 events have already taken place and it is continuing to take place it's not that it has already come to a close and we have also shared lot of clarity between the tribulation period and the rapture tribulation period happens first and the rapture comes second i was also thinking in the reverse order but then matthew 24 verses 15 to 33 clearly tells the sequence of the event and jesus himself told that because why it's very important <clears throat> well who would be part of the tribulation would there be believers in that tribulation time uh, is god sadist and all that we have answered all these questions in our previous sessions in this episode right so please listen to all those now we are dealing with the first event wars violence and lawlessness and uh, we are not yet done with that with that event we had been talking from the book of matthew chapter 9 and verse number 2 uh, and uh, we are now dealing through the subject of new testament wars we had been talking through several wars third world war first world war second world war third world war had to happen if it happens what would be the consequences we reviewed all of those and we are now and what is the theme of the war in generalized terms what is bible talking about the war all this we covered yeah and uh, we still have a we still have few more representations and i am not in a rush to conclude this first event yes there are 13 more events awaiting for us but we lose nothing <laughs> don't worry yeah god will wait for us to conclude don't worry jesus will not come before we conclude everything and that doesn't mean that you can take all advantage and start uh, you know watching pornography and Uh, smoking cigarettes and all that no sorry we did not mean to say that but we meant to say that god's grace period is extended therefore god is very very happy and delighted to see more people coming to christ and receiving this uh, salvation and walking in the path of righteousness and embracing the kingdom of heaven today we will be discussing from the scripture um and we also spoke from Ephesians 6 uh, the armor of god helmet of salvation and all that and swords are no more in use here now and then now we are going to talk through second uh, corinthians chapter 10 verses 1 to 6 will be our meditation verse second corinthians chapter 10 verses 1 to 6 paul is talking through a important subject spiritual war yeah it is it is no different from what we had been discussing through the last five six sessions New Testament wars are the ones which have starts within you if you can fix the problem the root cause of the problem deep within you and yourself if every human being is going to do this if every man can every man every woman is going to do this where is the room for war external wars i meant to say civil wars verbal wars <clears throat> riots violence communal clashes and language uh uh why what to say the conflicts in language and culture and gender and gender biases even over the skin colors you know the blacks fight against fight against the whites and the whites hate blacks once upon a time you were our slaves and how dare you come and rule over us and all that and uh, in 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 the in, the, in, in the us it happens where where is the room for all of these and on top of that you know people taking up new i mean nations taking up nuclear weapons third world war we covered all this right and where where would be the room for the third world war if everyone would start to fix the problems within them <laughs> and what are the problems that happens within a human being is also what we discussed in our previous session strife hatred envy bitterness grudge all these are the problems that the human flesh battles and wants to expose that in the flesh and which is what has been outwardly uh, witnessed thereafter correct but it starts within you and that's why jesus was focusing much on what happens inside us 
than the external behavior, than the external mannerism. Yeah, you teach a person how to respect elders. It has to travel right inside him or her and naturally you will see the person changing his mannerism. Not sitting with crossed legs and all that when an elder walks in. You got to stand up and wish them, respect them and uh, you know, give them that trust. Bible says that. <clears throat> so these things, unless it travels inside, yeah, Inside means what? Your spirit and soul will have to abide. And that's why it's very, very important to stay in meditation in the word of God. Meditation is the medicine. Yeah, some people need insulin injection every day to keep their sugar levels in control. Likewise, the insulin is nothing but the word of God that keeps your spiritual being in control, spiritual levels in control. What are the spirit-related matters? Faith, love, hope, joy. The nine flavors in the fruit of the spirit. Galatians 5, 22 to 23. You want those levels to stay in the same level. Tolerance, long-suffering, yeah? patience, self-control. All these things, gentleness and goodness and kindness, all these things you want in the same levels. You need insulin called as the Word of God and the meditation in the Word of God. Day and night you shall meditate in the Word of God. God is well pleased with, with that person. And if, such a per, if a person is going to be involved in such a, a principle or habitual practice, then where is the room for the spiritual war? Why? At some point of time, your flesh would give up. Like how Paul's flesh gave up. Jesus' flesh gave up. Because why? Spirit dominates. Spirit edifies. Spirit admonishes. Spirit wins. Now today what is the situation of Christendom? What is the situation of the mankind? Regardless of gender, religion and all that, right? Talk about an unbeliever, talk about a believer. Both of them fall. There are weaknesses in the flesh which they are not able to rule over and control. The spirit is not able to rule over. Why? Because they moved far away from the word of God. Now let's get to 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse number 1 to 6. We start with verse number 1. Now, why Paul, myself, am pleading with you? If Paul is writing this, that means the matter is really serious. This matter really needs attention. Yeah, Pleading with you. He's not begging for money. But Paul is actually pleading for something else. Which is very, very serious and the matter requires lot of attention. Are you all with me so far? By the meekness and gentleness of Christ, he is pleading through the meekness and with all humility and gentleness of Christ, who in presence am lowly among you, but being absent am bold towards you. That's the way how Paul introduces, right? Yeah, I might be absent, but I'm very bold to express what is needed. And express where you are slipping off. And express where you are moving far away from the word of God. Where you are really, really backslidden. Uh, he doesn't even think twice to express those um, observations that he had been receiving as information through his brothers. And also the revelation that he receives from the kingdom of heaven. Verse number 2, but I beg you that when I am present, I may not be bold with that confidence by which I intend to be bold against some. Paul was not a very impressive preacher like Peter. Wherever Peter went, there was a lot of crowd. Wherever Paul went, people even slept and fell from the third floor. But he has a very strong uh, content to write. He's good at writing. He's a good writer. And Peter appreciates you know, our brother Paul, you know, has a good content writing skills and people who don't understand you better not preach or teach about that with all half confidence and like half knowledge and all that. So that is his problem. Who think of us as if we walked according to the flesh? This is the matter. Many people assumed that Paul is a 
great narrator is a great scribe and uh, is a is a degree holder of uh, as a as a rabbi and <clears throat> talking about his knowledge and skills and talent and potential but they have completely ignored and forgotten the spirit related matters the revelation from the holy spirit to his spirit yeah these are all spirit related matters that he is trying to reveal and he was not a person who walked according to his flesh and the desires of the flesh he would never even strive hard to fulfill those desires because he was a spiritual man he was a spiritual being for though we walk in the flesh we do not war according to the flesh that is his point yeah though we walk according to the flesh we do not war according to the flesh what does it mean <clears throat> you have to walk in the flesh right you need your bones legs nerves and all that to function together therefore you are walking walking in the sense you are able to travel to your office and all that how can you travel in your spirit so it's a very practical then don't overthink right some some of the things you know which paul writes people really put their brains oh there is some hidden secret brother come on let us research and no it, it's not always very tough to understand what paul writes there are very simple explanations uh, given to and uh, you need to just pay attention for though we walk in the flesh we do not war according to the flesh now what is he saying some of the decisions are judgmental filled with condemnation towards your brother towards your sister don't we and what is the root cause for that condemnation and for that judgmental attitude is you are offended or sometimes you are very defensive or sometimes you are filled with anger and rage or at times you are having that envy which introduces strife and hatred and bitterness you see how many things i told if this is not enough please take and read scriptures 2 timothy 3 1 to 9 colossians 3 5 to 9 mark 7 21 to 23 1 timothy 1 9 and 10 1 corinthians 6 9 and 10 romans 1 29 to 32 romans 6 13 to 20 ephesians 4 31 and uh, galatians 5 17 to 21 titus chapter 1 verses 5 to 8 and revelation 21 8 if you read all of these you will get a comprehensive idea of what are the sinful deeds that are evolving right from within us deep within us what are those things that are buried deep within us is what you and i will be able to clearly discover it's no rocket science just said you got to pay attention to yourself sometimes we don't pay attention to yourself most of the times we don't pay attention to ourselves we always pay attention towards that sister this brother and all that correct and what must be the character of the born again believer what must be a new man look like colossians 3 12 to 17 romans 12 verses 12 to 21 and ephesians 4 verses 17 to 24 if you read you will clearly understand what must be the character of the <clears throat> born again believer i am born again all things have passed away i am a new creation in christ second corinthians 5:17 but what is the definition what are the attributes through which you can judge yourself whether you are that born again believer or not how are you able to approve yourself that you are in christ or not these are the references which helps if that is not enough take and read ephesians chapter 5 complete chapter take and read second john chapter sorry 1 john chapter 2 the entire chapter a beautiful checklist has been given by brother paul and john you got to really evaluate yourself brothers my sisters is your human system walking according to your flesh or is your human system always abiding in the spirit is your spiritual system controlling your attitude your behavior your thoughts the words of your mouth your reactions everything that you talk or is your carnal system controlling which is exposed to the worldly matters worldly pleasures world related stuff you look at 10 unbelievers obviously their behavior will be far away from the word of god their behavior will be much different from the behavior of a born again believer why because the born again believer looks inside of him he finger point finger points at himself and he always walks through the course corrections he always allows those course corrections whereas a 
unbeliever or a person who belongs to the world always finger points at each other there's a political attitude right look at the politicians they always finger point at each other they, they never admit their mistakes unless and until there is a public rage no they won't say sorry to anyone never never ever they will always say it's because of that guy it happened huh it was not because of our uh, problem it was because of the previous government that actually you know created all these issues see we are busy fixing all the issues always finger pointing attitude blaming one another is definitely the attitude of a wicked man who who is filled with bunch of unclean spirits unclean spirits and the demons are ruling in them why because revelation 12 and says that's the character of the devil accuser of the brethren day and night he complains to god and who is our intercessor who is our mediator it's christ jesus our lord seated on the right hand side of the father mark 16 last two verses 1 john chapter 2 verses 1 and 2 hebrew chapter 1 and verse 3 he is our intercessor interceding for our needs and that's the reason and he is the advocate he is fighting for our case every day yeah he is our defense lawyer defending our case yeah the public prosecutor always talks uh for the person's uh, you know punishment whoever has been convicted and i'm not saying all the criminals are you know um are are free of uh, judgment yeah there are a lot of cases where public prosecutors really won and that's needed let the judgment be executed in its right in its right threshold and in, in its right measure in, in, in sorry in its right measure and not against that let let justice prevail let justice prevail yeah not about that but then the advocate jesus rises up and he says i have sacrificed my life they belong to me they deserve a second chance they deserve a third chance father have mercy on them father have patience on them that's why he said spoke about the parable when the tree is decayed and not able to bear fruit and this and that the gardener says give me one more year let me manure it let me water it let me do this and that and after a year which means what there is a expiry date there is a stipulated that the time is stipulated if the tree would not improve then you can actually chop this tree off and throw into fire you understand some 103 verse 9 that proves okay old covenant new covenant i gave you two examples talking through uh, talking about the same subject talking to the same three, uh, same matter you know what is it some 1039 the lord will not strive with the spirit of man forever neither will he hold his anger forever there is a time frame stipulated and ever assume that you will always keep getting the second chance and a trillionth chance a millionth chance and all that sorry god is going to walk away from your life why because you have fallen in love with the devil and the demonic practices you have started to love the demons more than god you have started to love the ways of unrighteousness than the ways of righteousness yeah a person we do not war according to the flesh a person will never a person who walks according to the what is opposite to this a person who would not war according to the flesh will always reason according to spiritual desires spirit related matters a person who is spiritual will never ever get into brawls quarrels fights and rages and all that he will always want to be pursuing peace with men that will be his attitude hebrews 12 14 says see i give you all scriptural references pursue peace with men therefore you are holy and therefore you are able to witness the presence of god many people enter into the prayer room and in the prayer room also they will be warring sorry they will they will have they, they will be at war with god and their enemies in the prayer room asking god or condemn them god punish them god kill them god kick them god hit them god this will be the prayer of many many born again believers and they will also quote references from the old covenant and they won't refer the new covenant because if new covenant references they give they will be caught are you trying to be shrewd to the lord to the shrewd i will definitely be shrewd and i will resist the proud but i will be merciful and gracious towards those that are humble admit your problems or tell them tell god that you are hurt and i did not expect this brother really hurt me i forgive him that's exactly is the attitude of a 
Christian or that must be the behavior of a Christian. Why? Because he is a person who will not war according to the flesh, but he will walk according to the spiritual desires. He will tightly embrace the spirit related matters. What are the spirit related matters? Pursue peace with men. You will go to any extent and Bible says that to possible extent be at peace with men. What if they don't receive the peace? They always treat you as their enemy. You do not count them as your enemy. Let them treat you as their enemy. That's their problem. 1 Thessalonians, sorry, 2 Thessalonians 3, 14, 15 says. But you pursue peace with man and if they are not accepting your peace, leave the matter there and move on. May God judge that person. That's between them and God. Got it? I understood the definition. Huh? Now, why am I saying all of this? A person who is not walking according to this protocol or as, according to the standard will never qualify when Christ returns to earth. He will never be part of that event. right? He will never be part of that rapture. He will never be part of the marriage. The church is married to Christ according to Ephesians 5. How many of you are with me? You are all... Pretending as if you have never heard any of this. Maybe it is true, but today you have heard it. You will be judged according to this now. Why it is very important, beloved? This is all part of the war, violence and lawlessness. This is the root cause for the end result is war. The end result is violence. The end result is a riot. The end result is a clash or a war, gang war. or The uh, end result is the lawlessness, execution of lawlessness. But what is the root cause? The root cause is the spiritual war. That is where Bible pays a lot of attention. <clears throat> Verse number 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mightily in God for pulling down strongholds. Ephesians 6.12, I could refer immediately. All of you know that, right? Our, blood, our fight is not with the blood and flesh. Blood and flesh means what? No, no spiritual uh, person will get into any sorts of cold wars or war of words or verbal wars with any human being. You will never pick any fight with any human being. 100% guaranteed. That itself is a good test which proves that you are still a carnal being. You are still the old covenant person. Tooth for tooth, eye for eye and what is that? Revenge for revenge and all that. No, sorry, that's old covenant. You are not a new covenant Christian. You are not a born again believer in Christ which talks about forgiveness. Love one another. Love edifies. Love never puffs up. Love forgives. Yes, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. What are those weapons? Belt of truth, breastplate of righteousness, gospel of peace, peace and sword of the spirit and uh, uh, one. Uh, what is it? Uh, helmet of salvation and one more thing about faith. <clears throat> These are the spiritual weapons. Fight it through faith. Fight it in a righteous way, in God's way. Take the word of God and claim the verses, helmet of salvation. And no harm shall befall you. Psalm 91 is then fulfilled only if you follow these standards. <clears throat> and only if you follow these standards, you are called as righteous son of God. And only if you are righteous son of God, you will qualify. Eh? When Christ returns, you will be part of God's family. And you will already be mighty in God. Bible says, <clears throat> the devil will be terrified looking at you. The devil will tremble in your presence. The devil will not have any kind of guts to fight against you. Why? Because you will pull down all his strongholds, Bible says. As Daniel pulled it down through, being, I mean, being a prayer warrior. King David was a prayer warrior. Yeah. And in the new covenant, you can see a couple of old covenant people still living while Jesus was born. Simon and Anna, prayer warriors. They dedicated their life in prayer, 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 all the time in fasting and prayer. Praying in the spirit will really pull down the demon strongholds, the devil strongholds, the demonic hosts will be torn into pieces. You will crush the head of the Satan right under your feet. Romans 16, 20 says, Verses 5 and 6 we will read and we will close. Casting down arguments and every... <coughs> excuse me. Casting down arguments. Lot of arguments in the Christendom. Denomination fights against denomination. Christendom, sorry, congregation fights against congregation. Within the congregation, the believers are split in the name of caste, in the name of gender, in the name of uh, skin color. And what is this? And these are the end times. I'm answering. What is this? this is a, these are the end times. <laughs> you can be sure that Christ's arrival is really, really 
very short in very short span of time christ is going to arrive because why all these things are happening where all these things happen that's the beginning of sorrowful days jesus said that in matthew 24 8 casting down arguments what will cast down arguments which family is always at peace they don't argue they don't fight over things petty matters or even important matters they always you know if they have disagreements they say come let's pray about it that's the way how they pursue peace and then they leave it to god casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of god you know another indication for this last days is last days uh, would be people would always brag about their skills education qualification uh, their uh, position in the uh, in their companies and what a big shot you know and about their friends and association a member of that club he knows that politician this and that truly you can assume there are a bunch of demons living in that brother that's it because he is a carnal fellow you know he is he is walking according to his carnal desires he is a person who belongs to the worldly pleasures yep against the knowledge of god bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of christ yeah have that self control have that reverence walk in reverence and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled god will not think twice to punish all the people who have really not fought this spiritual war in due in due diligence you understand the spirit always fight fights against the flesh and you got to fight in god's way by the way all right many many people many born again believers and christians they fight spiritual wars adopting the carnal methods <laughs> that's not right <laughs> see brother we are proving from the scripture and all that you are arguing you are fighting leave it there leave leave them alone if they you don't agree with them leave them alone pray for them you know that's the best thing you can do pray for them and do not count them as your enemy after you have admonished they don't agree with you leave them alone please may god bless us heavenly father we want to thank you for this wonderful time of fellowship we really appreciate your grace and mercies they are new every day and today you have taught us a very important subject the spiritual war that happens right inside us and how we can fix it i mean if you are fighting through carnal desires how we can fix it and how could we always take our flesh under control is what we have understood lord today the spirit related matters you have revealed to us spiritual weapons you have unearthed and unleashed to us and we want to thank you lead us by your side and guide us in jesus name we pray thank you my dear brothers sisters for your time and please subscribe to our channel if you have not subscribed because you will get automatic notification if you are already a subscriber please watch all the videos we put in lot of efforts to release every video and it's only for your benefit and share these channel details with everyone whom you know bring more people towards the life of salvation towards the path of <clears throat> righteousness that leads them towards a destiny kingdom of heaven they are not here to do, conduct any uh, you know or impose any religious convictions no we are not preaching religion here but we are preaching the word of god the way to live your lives understanding the value of your life and the life after death whether you are qualified there or not what will what will be your destination these are the things we are talking through while you live your lives here on earth you will see heaven had come down already why because your lives will change and you will change other people's life you know wherever one righteous person goes the atmosphere changes and my desire for you is you should be that brother you should be that sister who will bring heaven you know you bring heaven inside your office heaven inside your homes and wow you know the earth is already going to be heaven so you need to lead others through the into this experience as well right and use our channel details where we have already preached the word of god and splendid measures and let them listen and understand the values of their spiritual lives continue to remember me and our ministries in your personal prayers talk to god and pray for our time for our health and uh, for for you know that the holy spirit should lead us and please remember us 10 seconds every day that's all we are asking and if you have a prayer request please go to your abba father in heaven you don't run to a human being please always walk to your abba father and speak to him in the name of jesus your prayers will be answered 
god bless you take care of yourself and uh, i will meet you soon at the next session thank you